So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for coming out tonight. Appreciate it. We are very fortunate, uh, very lucky, and it is my great pleasure to welcome to the stage South Bend's favorite son, a man who, who many people probably remember, if you're my age or older, uh, from the movie reviews that he did on Channel 16, and of course from a little television show that some of you may be aware of called Beyond Our Control. Uh, so, thank you. Without further ado, Harry S. Spleen. I mean, Larry Karaszewski, sorry. Larry Karaszewski. Now I'm going to turn the mic over to Larry, but he told me to stay up here for some reason. For some bizarre reason. Um, no, thanks. Uh, I, you know, I've always wanted to come to the Ruben Film Festival ever since, you know, Ken told me about it. And um, it always never worked out, and I just happened to be in town. So um, I said I would like to come down and introduce the shorts because... Um, this kind of stuff is really important. When I was growing up here, um, you know, my mom was a waitress, my dad worked in a factory, and I had no, growing up, I had no, I loved movies, but I, there was no sense of community. There was no sense of like other like-minded people uh, who, you know, were excited by the same things I were. And, and luckily, when I did get to high school, I did join this thing called Beyond Our Control, which, um, which would just, you know, this, this, it just blossomed in terms of, there's so many people involved in that show that really did a lot of good work, and it taught you how to be professional. I mean, I really, you know, I, I still do exactly the same things I did in Beyond Our Control. I, you know, I made a living at it, and I wouldn't be where I am without it. Because it was a crazy thing where you would write scripts on Mondays and, and, and Tuesdays, you'd cast on Wednesdays, you'd write again on Thursdays, you'd build sets on Friday, you'd shoot it on Saturday, and you'd be on the air on Sunday. And so it was this thing where I don't even consider myself really ha to have gone to high school in South Bend. I went to this television show, and... Um, <laughs> Uh, you know, it taught me how to write comedy, it taught me how to write professionally. And so when I went out to Hollywood, it really, the transition wasn't that gigantic. And also there was a soft landing because there were so many other people out there from the show. People like Dan Waters wrote Heathers and, and Batman Returns, uh, Dean Norris who's on Breaking Bad. There's a, you know, a bunch of good people, Chris Webb who wrote Toy Story 2. Uh, so there's a lot of us out there who just, you know, they, growing up in South Bend, we all formed our sensibility and that's why I wanted to support the River Bend. Film Festival, um, and I'm going to do something that, that I, I rarely do. Um, I'm also involved in a, um, uh, a website called Trailers from Hell, and it's, uh, um, it's run by Joe Dante, uh, the guy who directed Gremlins, and what he did is he set up this website for uh, filmmakers to come and, um, and talk about strange movies they love, talk about you know, movies they, they admire. Sometimes they talk about their own movies. I've, I've done like 50, 60 films there, and I've actually never done uh, my own stuff. Uh, but tonight, I'm going to do two of my own uh, my own pieces. Um, the first one I'm going to do is, uh, is a film I wrote called Ed Wood. That I wrote Scott Alexander, um, <laughs> which I I picked it because if you're filmmakers, you you know you 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 know what that's like. And uh, uh, it, it, we started our careers writing comedy movies. Um, I wrote a, a film called Problem Child, and it was a, a big hit and things like this, but it was like a, um, a uh, kind of, the critics hated it. And so, um, uh, we, you know, we, we tried to re reboot our career in a different kind of way and try to not, like, maybe not write this commercial stuff and try to do that, like, small, independent, weird movie, and we wrote Ed Wood, and it wound up actually, you know, changing my life in a bigger way. Where Tim Burton came on board, and and uh, um, uh, you know, uh, so anyway, so let's run the trailer from hell on that, and I'll step aside. And you know, Ed Wood was not a famous person. You know, when he died, he was drunk and penniless, and you know, uh, a guy did porn. And it wasn't until a couple of years later where these guys, the Medved brothers. Uh, put out this book called the, the, you know, the Golden Turkey Awards, the 50 Worst Movies of All Time, and named him like the worst uh, filmmaker of all time. Uh, and what they did in the 80s was they, this book was so successful that they went to like revival theaters and uh, you know, everyone sort of laughed at Ed Wood, how bad he was, oh, this funny transvestite director. Um, and, but what Scott and I thought about doing it, and, and it probably was because of the whole problem child experience, we decided, what if you looked at Ed Wood differently? What if you looked at him sympathetically? What if you made the movie a celebration? Because if you guys are low-budget filmmakers. You know that if you're out there making low-budget films, you're not doing it because you know, you're getting paid or you're going to be famous or any of that kind of stuff. You're doing it because you love cinema. And we decided to make this really a tribute to just a guy who loves cinema so much. And also, you know, he, you know, the way he took, takes care of this band of people. 
uh, you know, including uh, uh, you know, fallen horror star Bela Lugosi, played by um, Martin Landau. Um, and I think the whole thesis of the film is really comes together in a, uh, even though this is a true story, it's one of the few scenes in the movie that's not based in reality in any way whatsoever, which is when we have Ed Wood uh, meet Orson Welles in a bar. And the idea was, what if the worst filmmaker of all time and the greatest filmmaker of all time sat down and had a drink? What would they talk about? What would they be their problems? And it was like, they're in the exact same boat. They, you know, they, they, you know producers are recutting their films and they're having to cast um, uh, you know, people they don't want to. And it's just like, and so whenever we meet a filmmaker, no matter how big they are, they always pull me aside at some point and say, I'm, you know, I'm just one step away from being Ed Wood. In fact, someone just, someone, a, a guy in the hallway just said, I'm South Bend's Ed Wood. So, you know, <laughs> get in line. There's a lot of South Bend Ed Woods out here. Um, so, uh, you know, this movie totally changed our careers. We went from being the guys who wrote Problem Child movies and everyone hated uh, to the guys who wrote this and this won Academy Awards. Martin won Best Supporting Actor. Uh, and it launched us on this whole new career where we sort of wrote what we call anti-biopics, which is biopics for people who, who don't deserve them. I mean, kind of, <laughs> kind of uh, you know, fringe characters who are going against the mainstream. And, um, um, you know, so, uh, and because we'd been typecast on uh, Problem Child, uh, we decided that, you know, we would like to be typecats in this genre. And so this was, uh, we did The People vs. Larry Flint, and then we did this film, which is Man on the Moon, based on the life of Andy Kaufman. This is also a fairly personal film for us because I think of my Beyond Our Control experiences. Doing comedy in the 1970s, it's kind of hard to place yourself back then because comedy had a, kind of a punk rock aura back then, where, it was, where being, you know, being sat, satirizing things felt daring, right? Now there's so much satire in the media that there's, there, there's only funny news on television. There isn't regular news. But at this time, it felt, it felt radical. And uh, it was people like Richard Pryor when SNL started. And of all the people doing comedy in, this, in the 70s, Kaufman was probably the most extreme, where they were, you know, he was a mainstream television star on Taxi. You couldn't be more mainstream than that, this lovable character, Laka. But he had this nightclub act that was, that was avant-garde. He was really, I would say, one of the very first performance artists. He was a, a guy who, who, who asked the question, why does comedy have to be funny? You know, <laughs> which is a really crazy thing. He would push audiences you know, in strange directions. He would read The Great Gatsby to them for, for hour after hour. He would become a wrestler. He had an alter ego named Tony Clifton. He, he did so many mind fucks that like, even when he died, no one believed he actually died. It was kind of the ultimate, um, you know, boy who cried wolf kind of thing. Um, and when we started working on the project, we got we we were we were initially interested in writing a movie about Andy, uh, uh, and then Milos Forman and, and and Dan DeVito approached us, and we were like, sure, let's all do it together. But the problem was we had to write it, and we had, um, you know, we did we interviewed everybody, and we had all these things, but we were having trouble figuring out what we were going to do. And we met with Lynn Margulies, who's the ca uh, real life person that that Courtney Love plays. And when she came into our office, she was like, I don't know how you guys are going to do this, you know? And, and we're like, no, we just want to find the real Andy. And she's like, there was no real Andy. And all of a sudden, bam, a light bulb went off in our heads. And we said, what if we made that our movie? What if it was a movie about a guy who had no center? What, about, what if it was a movie about a guy who just couldn't live without putting one mask on after another? Like, and like, as a, like an onion, you keep on peeling layers after layers after layers. And when you get to the center, you know, what is there? And... and I think one of the funniest things Milos ever said when we were done with the film was, you guys always write anti-biopics. This is really an anti-biopic. People leave the theater knowing less about Andy than they did when they come in, <laughs> which is true. And I, you know, I was, we were very proud of it. So that's Trailers from Hell. Check out TrailersFromHell.com. You'll find lots and lots of funny things. I did a great one this week on a movie called Norman Is That You, a, a gay-themed Red Fox movie from 1976. So check that out. And enjoy the rest of the shorts. Bravo to you guys. Good luck. <laughs>